Tuesday morning guys. Alan, note to self when you come into the car, bring the car key with you. Otherwise she's end up standing in the rain for two or three minutes while Michelle comes with the key. I'm sold. just been giggling like a little girl haven't you again would you like to tell why he was giggling like a little five-year-old no if anybody watched the bbc news this morning <laughs> <laughs> they can probably guess it was a certain word wasn't it yes <laughs> we're not going to get it out of her bbc news little blue pills Terminology. Moving on. Hi guys, that's me at work. We're going to have to do an extremely quick change around here at the minute. We've got stuck behind a wagon, going a little bit slow, and with the rain and all that, uh, I'm just on time by the looks of it. Well, about three minutes. So you're going to have to get off and go and do your bit, and I'll jump out in the rain and do my bit. Don't worry about me getting out in the rain. Cold. I've got to get out in the rain too. Yeah, but that's not for at least half an hour. No, I've got to get out in the rain right now. I can't drive from the passenger seat. Oh, I. <laughs> it's not one of these cars. I can't just pull the steering wheel across. See, that's what we, we need. One of them cars. We need the Tesla that drives it itself. See, there we go. Save up. They have one for Christmas. No. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Anyway, okay, moving guys, on. That's the working day over with, and we're just having a discussion here about whose turn or who crashed the cars first. And I've just found out that Michelle didn't tell me, but she crashed the car yesterday into a wall. Well, when I crashed the car, I was going to say, I didn't crash the car, the, the wall was just closer than I was expecting it to be. She used the, the wall as extra brakes. I didn't hit it that hard. And I'm just saying, I'm just laughing because I'm chuffed it wasn't me first. Well, you know I didn't hit it that hard. You know how I know you didn't? I didn't hit it that it's hard. It's not got an eleven thousand pound bill for it. A, I don't have an eleven thousand pound bill for it, and B, the airbags didn't go off. Okay. <laughs> just front on collision, the airbags would have gone off. Well, anyway, we came to the conclusion they built the wall in the wrong place, haven't they? Yeah. Should have built it three foot back, shouldn't they? Yeah. Uh, anyway. So we just then gone to the discussion of crashing cars when I stopped laughing, obviously. Yeah. And Michelle said, see, I knew I shouldn't have told you, I, for this reason. Yeah. I'll laugh at her. Uh, but yeah, I's not been the first to crash this car and I can officially tell everybody it wasn't me first. No, no And it wasn't me first in the Cleo, neither. No, that was me. I wrote it off. Twice. Well, actually, you crashed it twice, didn't you? I crashed it twice, yes. Once into a van. And then and then I wrote it off. I forgot about that van. And once into a wall. I remember I saw the scrape on the bumper and the photographs the other day. Didn't look at the other side because there was no side of the car, but there was a scrape on the bumper when you hit that van. Yeah. And before that it was me, I crashed the I crashed that Astra about four times before Michelle managed to do something. I didn't crash the Astra. I never. No, I'm lying. Although technically that 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 lorry hit us. <laughs> or is that not what you were thinking of? <laughs> no. You, you you bumped it. I forgot about that lorry. You know. That lo I forgot about that lorry. That lorry hit us. I just happened to be driving at the time. It was Whoa. that one was not my fault. And we had a shared one when that bus hit us. Nobody was in the car at that point. Uh, but technically it was half my fault because I was watching the bus do it. I didn't actually know it had done it. Uh, so when did I when, when did I crash the Astra? You drove into that brick that you'd have put up on the corner of our Well, if we're going to go by that standard then you bro you broke this car first because you did that the other week. Tell me. It. <laughs> Actually, I drove over the brake. I 
think. Well, so did I with the ice. No, ashram. I get it with the wheel. That don't count. You the wheels, dragged it. The wheel's not. Yeah, I know. I was lucky. The wheel's not. <laughs> No, it doesn't count. Just that little red one doesn't count. You hit a wall and a lorry and a bus and a van. And what if I hit? I hit a post at the hospital, which was at 45 degrees when we got out. Uh, it was at 45 degrees before we got out. I know everybody else has driven into it as well. Um, yes, yeah, staggered parking. What else have I been Oh, yeah, I drove into a telegraph pole. You drove into the side of the building where you work. Yeah, well, that was bound to happen. You drove into a deer. Well, I think it now, yeah. <laughs> I technically didn't drive into the deer. The deer landed on me. <laughs> the deer was in front of the car. We no, it jumped it. and landed on me. Well, actually, yeah, technically it was in front of the car because it hit the front of the car. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd have come through the windscreen and give me some serious pain. However, I think for, for you know, um, wince inducing um, insurance claims, mine wins. Yes. With that wall. Yes. £11,000. £11,000 wall plus the cost of the car that I wrote off. That we'd only had a few weeks. That we got because the car got wrote off. Yeah. I asked the broke down so we bought a clear just to keep us going. And. And well, then I wrote it off by driving in a wall. Yeah. In weather just exactly like this, which is why Alan is driving. Because this makes me nervous in the extreme. <laughs> anyway, with that, we're going to nip into Mark. He's got a couple of sandwiches because the film club's coming around tonight. Yeah, let's go and get some food because we need to get home. Yeah, moving on. Hi guys, that's us home and Michelle has got an unboxing. Or as I said, an unopening. Yep, my anniversary fairy loot crate has arrived. As you can tell, it's an anniversary edition because the box is purple. However, I'm a bit worried because if you see the edges of the box there, it's all been taped shut where it's been torn. It looks like somebody's kicked it from one end of the warehouse to the other. So I need to make sure everything and it's okay. I hope it is. So far so good. Cheat sheet. So first of all, I have got some soap called Bilbo's Birthday Cake. Okay, Bilbo's Birthday Cake Vegan Soap by Ge Geeky Clean. Yeah. It's the same people that I got that Loki um, moisturiser from. So, Bilbo's birthday cake. It's got sparkles in it. And it's kind of pink and peachy cream. Sparkles, so that means that I'm, when you use that, I'm going to be covered in sparkles forever. It's strawberry vanilla. And yes, you'll end up covering And why do they make so flavoured that you obviously can't eat it? Scented, should I say. All right, next, toast to the Warden of the North. Hot chocolate. chocolate hot chocolate. Luxury drinking chocolate. It refers to Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. Yeah. We'll have some of that at the weekend, what do you think? Why not? Toast to the Warden of the North. Next is some cork bunting. Yeah. This is quite cool. Yeah, cork bunting. Oh, cork bunting. This item is brought to you by a Paladone. Yeah. And it is the perfect bunting to hang on your shelves or your desk area. Yeah, it's basically a miniature cork board. Yeah, you can add your badges and stuff. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, actually. So that's quite cool. Uh, Shadowhunters, I want to say scarf. Am I right? Uh, 
Yeah, State of Sorrow. Uh-huh. It's... Uh, oh, I don't understand. Oh, I'm going to sell it, sell it, sell it. No. Oh, I want it. Exclusive Rune... Oh, yeah. Rune Ceremony Scar by uh, Fiction T Designs. This scarf is inspired by the rune ceremonies in the mortal instruments. Yeah, shadow hunters. So it's huge. Give you an idea of the hugeness. Huge. Huge. It's gorgeous though. I'll fold that back up in a minute. I have another bookmark, The Bells. I am a bell, I control beauty. Because be you've never got enough bookmarks, have you? I Although having said that, you've got dozens and you fell out with me the other day because I picked one up and used it. Oh. And a matching pin. Mm -hmm. I've also got a candle, Goblet of Fire. Yeah, exclusive Goblet of Fire Candle by Paper Flames Candle Company. Isn't the mini jar adorable? It is. Fresh bread and chocolate. What? It's what the candle smells like, fresh bread and chocolate. It smells like baked pan of chocolate. Seriously. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't... I'm going to assume nothing's fallen out of the box because you've no, got the cheat no, sheet. Yeah, yeah, no. So now we're on to the book of the. Well, you can't open that. Yeah, I can. No, you can't because you've not read the last one. I will read the last one. No, don't work that way. Hey, it's my rule. You, but you made them last rules up. Uh, what's this? Letter from the author. Okay. A postcard, which I've got a feeling has just told me what the book is. Yeah, it has. So this month's Fairy Loot Crate Book of the Month is State of Sorrow by Melinda Salisbury. Uh... A people laid low by grief and darkness, a cutthroat race for power and victory, a girl with everything and nothing to lose. By day sorrow governs the court of tears, covering for her grief-maddened father, who has turned their once celebrated land into a living monument for the brother who died before she was born. By night she seeks solace in the arms of the boy she lo she's loved since childhood, but one ghost won't stop haunting her. And when enemies old and new close ranks against her, sorrow must decide how far she's willing to go to win. Be swept away by the dark and dangerous new world from Melinda Salisbury, best-selling author of the Sin Eater's Daughter trilogy. Isn't the cover beautiful? Alan is sort of looking a bit nonplussed. And then there's like a extended fairy scoop with puzzles and things in it this time because it's uh, it's an anniversary edition. So this is the memorable memorable moments box for March, and next month's theme is whimsical journeys. You chuffed? I am actually, yeah. So when you're gonna read last month's book? After I get the book, the book club book finished. I'll tell you through that. I have to start that. So. But the book club book is like half the thickness of this, and then I and then I will read the fairy loot book. I need to stop taking my Holocaust book to work because I'm not getting very far through it because it's it's a hard read. You know what I mean? I'll take something else. You don't have to read it before we go to crap day, but out on the other hand, you've got till May. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's Michelle's unboxing of a furry loot crate. And I haven't got anything. 
Yeah, you have. It's a DVD in the kitchen for you. I've got a DVD. So go and get it and open it later. It's about 10 minutes before everybody turns up. Moving on. Okay, guys, as I just said, I didn't have anything, and then Michelle pointed out that I did. I've got. It, oh, includes bonus scenes, not seen in cinemas. Justice League of America. So, it's another one I can bore you with. Drive you mad with. Let, you can enjoy watching with me. Of course. Because that's it. We can talk. Moving on. Hi guys, it's now Wednesday morning. Uh, film club came last night. We opened our boxes, opened the DVDs and stuff. Film club turned up and then we chatted till whew, gone nine o'clock ish, and then it was tea. We had to have our tea and then just kind of went to bed. So a very very belated. It's a good night from me and it's a good night from Michelle upstairs. I'll be it Wednesday morning. Moving on.